Howdy, folks. Happy Friday night, Friday Night Live. We're here again with another topic. The last uh, the last day in September. Is it really? Wow, that flew by. Oh, Tomorrow my God, it's the 30th. To... Yeah. You know, when you work out of your home, which we both do, when you do that, you you know how it is. If any of you do that, you lose track of time. You know, on the weekends, you go, is it Saturday or Sunday? Did I drink too much? What? Anyway, we're going to be talking about this. If you want to support the channel, there are links at the very top of the description where you can support our channel. Thank you very much for the people who have. It's helping us basically expand the other channels. Chase right now, our son, our 18-year-old wonder drummer's son, uh, he works at Costco full-time and, uh, well, almost full-time. Almost. It's getting a lot of hours. But he decided he was going to concentrate on getting a real job so he could support himself as being a drummer because now he's used to be a little child prodigy when he was eight years old and then he dropped out of it. Continued drumming, didn't want to be on YouTube. Now it's coming back to it, but he never stopped drumming through the whole time. Anyway, I want to thank all the folks who are here already. Before we get to some of my favorite albums, and I'm really looking forward to you guys telling me what your perfect album is where you listen to it. And listen, you can listen to it from start to finish. You know, uh, especially with CDs came out, especially now with on Spotify or Apple Music, you can listen to the whole thing right straight through. Those are the albums that I'm interested in tonight, if you can indulge me tonight. Uh, Transparent Media Truth said, I've always said The Pretender. Oh, uh, Linda Pal Palama. I don't know who that is. If not for, I, I don't know who that is. And uh, Ed chimes in. Oh, Asia Steely Dan. Yeah. Asia Steely Dan is a perfect example of a perfect album where I wouldn't change anything. That's another way of saying it. You wouldn't change anything, right? Fraser J. John, why are you even asking that? You just know it's the seventh one. You got me there. I've never <laughs> stopped on. loving your channel. It goes straight for the heart. Uh -huh. Hold, on. Hold on. You know I had it on my pack. La, 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 la. Oh, I love these guys. I love this album meant so much to me. Uh, Rick says, hey, Rick, greetings from Ohio. Never mind the weekend. It's the whack end. Hit that <laughs> like button, folks. Kill Thanks. Me. This means a lot to us Thanks. when we come on here. And everyone, every week during the, the videos, even people who are coming on the videos uh, late, um, we have problems concentrating because there's a laptop here with us on it. But we're, but we're looking into a lens up here. A DSLR camera up here. And of course, here. I'm looking down at the iPad trying to So you're going through. You're all over the so place. So I'm like all over the place. You know, um, I was just talking to um, a gentleman who had a Canadian hit. I got I to gotta mention this. Uh, uh, Bondi Junction, Peter Foldy. And it was the first concert I ever went to. But Peter said something about working. He became a filmmaker. He worked with Jan Michael Vincent, of course, drank himself basically to death. Remember Jan Michael Vincent? He was like the a poster boy in the 70s. He said, you know what? He was a, a, a little, little grumpy to work with, but he knew what cameras to look at. That reminded me. He always knew his mark. He knew his mark all the time because he'd been doing it so long. Even if he came on set and he was like, uh, you know, drinking a little bit, he was... So used to knowing that, okay, if he's standing there and that person's standing there and the camera angle is supposed to be a certain way where it looks like I'm looking at you and you're looking at me. You know, the way they do that with interview styles, right? He had a down pat. Crazy. I'll be sharing that on the Canadian channel in the next little while because we're getting that up and going again. Uh, Drone 67, yes, 90120. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, the Yes album for me would be, the Yes album for me would be... Fragile and Close to the Edge, the two albums. Um, but everyone's right. Because if you can listen to an album from start to finish and it makes you feel good and you like every song, then you're right. No one can say, hey, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? I've got Dave LL500 BG's main course. <gasps> I love, main course is my favorite. Uh, main course and Spirits Having Flown are my two favorite Bee Gees albums. David Cyril jumped in, yeah, uh, Genesis Duke, and yes, Close to the Edge. Oh, oh, Genesis Duke, you say? Well, it's in my pile. There you go. Uh, Barrett says, Mr. Mr., welcome to the real world. Oh, my God. What a great choice. Not a bad track. And there is that thing where it consistently, the sound is consistent on that. You know, now and then you'll want, you'll have an, uh, an artist that you like that goes... A little kooky in one album. You always have one crazy song or one slow song, extra fast song. But the thing about Welcome to the Real World, it has all that stuff, but there's a consistent, cohesive sound on that one. And the one before and the one after. 
uh, David Ryder, The Who, Who's Next, when every yeah. track on the album has its own uh, Wikipedia page. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Great choice. Bruce Hornsby, debut album. Bruce Hornsby, second album. Not a bad track off it. He won't give me an interview now. I have tried seven times. I've interviewed him twice in person, and I don't know why, if I'm on the not. It might be like one of those Ann Wilson things. And by the way, this week we've got, uh, uh, just that so you know, Steve Fossen talks about his heart ears, very honestly. Uh, Michael DeRozier, it's really DeRozier, but he even agreed, but people in English people call it DeRozier. They talk very honestly about the heart reunion on uh, the, uh, Hall, uh, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I've tried to get an interview with Ann Wilson. It's, I kind of felt like I was given the runaround, and I kind of felt like I was on the naughty list because I put the F Fisher Brothers on. So we're going to combine all those interviews and put it on this week. Just FYI. Um, let me go through here. Uh, Ed says, yes, uh, 90125 was my second non-Steely Dan choice. Uh, Brandon <laughs> Steele says, good morning, John and Shannon. Mine is The Miracle by Queen. Oh, cool. Again, no one, the, the days of someone coming up to you and saying, well, they still do. Um of coming up to you and say, what are you, crazy? And that's so stupid as an adult to say, well, you can't, what, what? That's that's what you like. Uh, Anthony says, blonde on blonde. Oh, yeah, um, Bob Dylan. Uh, Christopher Agin, sorry if I don't pronounce your names correctly. You're a lucky man, John, with your beautiful sidekick next to you. For me, it's probably Boston's first album, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors is a tie. Oh. And I'm a diehard Eagles fan. Thank you for the compliment, by oh, the way. Oh, that's very nice. Did, what did he say? Which album it was? Boston? So, uh, Boston's first album, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors, is a tie. I don't know why I don't have rumors here. I, I thought I thought Hotel California. These are albums that you can listen to, and for whatever reason, there's no kind of crazy song on it. You want... Uh, I like the cohesive sound. You know, fast and slow songs, mm -hmm. but I can't say that enough, right? Brent Bourgeois' first album, by the way, Bourgeois Tag, is classic. Oh, I love this album so much. It helped me get through it. It's all breakup. Before I met her, there was a few tight, you know, rough things going on. Uh, Darren says, Jeff Buckley's Grace. Oh, yeah. Good choice. Pet Sounds. Uh, Rick says, I would guess the easiest album to like would be uh, Jethro Tull's Thick. As, as a, a brick. brick. Fairly simple, one song. I just bought uh, Minstrel in the Gallery, which I just realized I've had on CD and cassette, but never had it on LP. So I opened it up and I went, oh, wait a minute, I've never had this on LP at the used record store in Riverview we went to. Sure. Andreas Follenweider, Swiss harpist. I always thought there was a rocker inside of him and it really shows on this album. Uh, it's not rock, but if you've never listened to uh, this guy, Andreas Follenweider. The V is an F, the F is a V. That's how you pronounce his name. I had a, a Swiss gentleman call me up when I was doing New Age music <laughs> and he said, you're saying the name wrong. And he said it was Follenweider. Uh, Douglas Schwabe, The Who, Who's Next. Um, oh, yeah. We've got... Uh, it's come up a few times. St. CM, C, uh, CMS, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Yes, I had it. I forgot to bring it in. Rush Power Windows. Ah, okay. Uh, Sheer Heart Attack. Sheer Heart Queen. Oh, that's such a great album. Gary Mintz, Neil Young Harvest, and In Same Mode, uh, CSNY, Deja Vu. Deja Vu, yeah. Of course. Uh, there you go. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pay attention to how I'm presenting. Oh, what happened? Or, or we, we lost our, our camera. Oh, you hit it. You hit our camera. Hold on. Yeah, you can't hit this. Line. Sorry. It's okay. It's slightly different. I'm going. Why can't I see myself? It's because. Hold on. There we go. Sorry, my bad. Grab some water and. Uh... You hit the, you hit the uh, DSLR camera cord. Whoops. I was going. How come I can't see myself? <laughs> Crazy. Bruce Hornsby's fourth album, Harbor Lights. <laughs> this to me is a perfect album. I, I uh, this is when I this is the first time I interviewed him, and uh, he was a he was a, a nice guy to talk to. I would, do I have my phone? No, I don't. I Robot, Alan Parsons, my favorite Alan Parsons album. I'm talking to Alan next month, which is starting tomorrow, uh, and we're going to talk about his whole discography. Mike Rutherford. Small Creep Stay. Not a bad track off it. We got a lot of people coming in. So I'm just backing up here to see where I was. It, uh, David says Van Halen, Fair Warning. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel says Boston, first album. I've heard every track on the radio. 
Yeah, pretty much, eh? Uh, Zed Ebb, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway oh, it's... by Genesis. Thank you. It's it's behind us. I can say that behind the green screen is my CDs. I have to find a way for us to be able to broadcast with the green screen. Because the green screen, it's literally, you can, oh, you can't see it. It's like, it's right there, right behind Shannon's head. Right here. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Richard Merck's second album. It's a little out of our lane that we usually talk about, even though I'd love to talk to Richard Merck's. To me, it's a perfect album. There's not a bad track on it. Uh, David says, Elton John, Tumbleweed Connection, probably only one hit on there, but all the songs are so good. Where to now? St. Peter. Love that. Yeah. Uh, the Allman Brothers Band, live at the Fillmore West. Known as one of the greatest live albums of all time. Uh, Fraser J says, uh, I know this is a debatable choice, especially after your recent video, but come on, Michael Jackson's Thriller has to be up there. The production, musicians, songwriting, etc. Oh, yeah, I, I oh, agree. Michael Jackson's Thriller. It's uh, right up there. Well, after my last video, I was just saying, I was just quoting Elton John, Elton John saying, and, and you know, you get the diehard people, <laughs> and it was basically, and I don't usually do these kind of videos, but it was basically uh, a Michael Jackson was a weird dude video, right? And I don't usually say that about people, but I was quoting Elton John, but I wasn't disagreeing with him. But I've talked to many people who are on Thriller, and, uh, you know, they, they're all very diplomatic because they played with them, and they were able to play on the biggest selling worldwide album of all time, Lukather, Steve Piccaro. Um, oh, God, I've talked to a few people who are on that album. John J.R. Robinson wasn't on that one, I don't think. He was on uh, Off the Wall, and then he was on with them after that. <clears throat> After I get off this broadcast, I'll go, oh, why did I mention that guy? Uh, Grant says, most people would probably not choose this one, but... Uh, no, but you did, and you're right. But Backman Turner Overdrive's album, Not Fragile. Not Fragile's uh, uh, arguably their best album. Everyone usually goes to Not Fragile. I don't. I, I agree with you on that. Uh, T. Knox, Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, we had that one. Uh, Murph 625, Revolver, Who's Next, Ziggy Stardust. Oh, God, yeah. Ziggy Tumble Stardust. Connection. I'm surprised Ziggy Stardust didn't come up uh, before. Peter Gabriel So. Yes. Yes, for sure. Peter Gabriel So album so deserves to be there. I called Peter Gabriel a musical genius, and some guy went on on our, on, I think it was, oh, the other site, Rock History Book, because we do it today in history in a sort of disguised way, so the... So the <clears throat> So the content uh, maintains evergreen. So we don't really say it's December 26th. We say it happened on December 26th as if the date is secondary so that people still go into the video. By the way, I got to mention, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, I did a thing on on Leonard Skinner and uh, so many, 13 members, 12 members, I forget, were dead. And I, 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 uh, I, I he, he, uh, left out a member and I had a technical problem. And I have to say, I've been doing this a long time, you know, on YouTube, and I've been a radio announcer for 40 years. I'm still on the radio in Vancouver, which is across the country from us, but I'm still on the air every single day there. And Leonard Skinner fans are the rudest fans I've ever had to deal with ever. Like, you know, saying I'm wrong, if I made a mistake, that's fine. But uh, we got a super chat. But, you know, like basically screaming with capital letters. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Keep it up. Pre appreciate it. Super chat. I, 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 I have to say it. Leonard Skinner fans were awful. Oh, my God. Like you, blankety, blankety. I'm going, okay, I, 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 that, it was a technical problem. What's wrong with you? Jesus. They need an Ativan. Bayou says, Rush, a farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, and Moving Pictures. Love uh, moving Davis pictures. Davis says Abbey Road. Abbey Road, of course. Rick chimes in Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. Mm -hmm. uh, One of the first, like, real prog, sort of symphonic prog albums, right? Uh, Dirt Big Leftist. Ooh, Steely Dan, <laughs> The Royal Scam, but really any Steely Dan album. Yeah. Yeah. I like The Royal Scam. Tom Waits, Rain Dog. I'm not that familiar with Tom Waits. I certainly, you know, uh, know who he is and what he's accomplished, but. I've never bought a Tom Waits album. That might be the next thing we talk about. What artists have you never bought an album from? Winslow Red Cross, uh, Not One Bad Tune. Okay. Um, John at the advis at the Village Advisory. Hi, John and Shannon. Dark Straits, Love Over Gold. Oh, 
I loved uh, uh, making movies. To me, that's my perfect album. A lot of people say um, um, the first album, which I loved. Um, but yeah, making movies to me was my perfect Dire Straits album. <laughs> Uh, Murph says toy matinee, third matinee. Oh yeah, yeah with uh, with uh, Richard Page. Uh, Jason says the Cars debut. That was such a great album. I like Candio as well. Candio uh, was one of my favorites. Uh, Winslow says I Robot is one of my favorites. Yay! Uh, Rick May says Jeff Beck, Blow by Blow. Blow by Blow is. You know, people, I know it's become the cliche thing to go to when you talk about Jeff Beck. What's your favorite album? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But, but it really is, as far as a cohesive album, when you listen to, I mean, as a, a, a one of the, you know, when you listen to instrumental albums, it's a different way of listening, but then again, it isn't. It's just so hard to explain, but Blow by Blow just blew me away. Uh, Jeffrey Jackson, this is probably not a real popular choice, but I love every moment of every track on Yes, Going for the One. Cheers, you're, you guys. You're right, but you're right, right? We're not asking what the popular thing, and, and every night we do this, whenever we do this, we're asking you. <clears throat> and, you know, I would never say you're wrong. You can't be wrong. You, you, how, can, how can someone tell you what you like or don't like? You love it, you're right. Uh, Rick May, Joe Jackson, Look Sharp. Look Sharp's a great album. Uh, Christopher Cruz, The Wall. See, The Wall, I, for me personally, I thought, I don't know, easy now. I thought it should have been a, a, a single album. But I'm, I, it's an unpopular vote, and I know that they made the right decision by making it a double album. Oh, how about that for diplomacy? That was really dipl diplomatic. Uh, Left Overture by Kansas. Oh, so true. And Point of No Return after that was another one. I, and I like Monolith. A lot of people didn't like it because it was a sort of a slight departure in sound, but I like Monolith. I was listening to it the other day. Uh, Rick says, Pink, Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Uh, Rick Wright shines on the keyboards. Yeah, I Wish You Were Here is, uh, to, to me, you, you go Wish You Were Here, The Wall, and Dark Side of the Moon. I know that's the cliched way of, of the, um, I was listening to Adam Hart Mother the other day. Uh, Maureen says, Monkeys, Prices, Aquarius Jones. Oh, okay. First one tonight. Mm. And thanks for the super chat, by the way. Who was that? That was Robert. Oh, thanks, Robert. That's very uh, nice Claudia of you. Claudia C., Street Talk by Steve Perry. Hi, Claudia. Oh, that's a great album. Uh, Pope Dope, George Michael Faith. There. There you go. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> uh, Captain Beyond, debut album. Okay. Uh, Fraser says, John Robinson is on Thriller, John. Yes. Oh, is he? Okay. Okay. I didn't think he was, but good. I'm glad to know he was. I was just talking to him before, uh, last month. He was, um, I think I told everyone that uh, Chase, our, our son, was doing Higher Love, you know, where basically uh, you it engage the snare, you disengage it. And, and Chase says, are you in contact? Do you know how to get a, are you in still in contact with John Robinson? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I can email him or text him. And Chase says, do you mind, can you ask him if he, was that like an overdub? Because because he says I don't know how we could do that. That especially in the studio when it's not necessary, do higher love where the snare engaged and disengage it and engage it at the same time where he just could have used a second snare or else just overdub. So I I I text um, John Jr. and and he got back to me right away. He says Oh I'm in Japan right now, which I knew he's in Japan with David Foster. And he says, get a hold of me when I get back. Let's do another interview. And But he didn't answer the question, but but he will. Uh, David says, Todd uh, Rundgren, uh, Hermit of Mink Hollow, one of the greatest power pop albums of all time. I like, Nearly Human to me is a perfect album. I don't have it on CD. I've got to get it on CD. I used to have it on CD. Mark Dawes, Christopher Cross, self-titled. Yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful project. Uh, BC, BC says I Robot, Alan Parsons project, but number Yay. one has to be Dark Side of the Moon. And, and both featured, both had uh, Alan Parsons. Oh, you can, can see through it because of the green. Ooh. Now I'm trying to keep up here on the uh, comments, so if I leave yours out or if I just jump ahead, um, just How let you know. How dare you? Uh, we've got uh, Transparent Media Truth, Absolutely Making Movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darren yeah. says making movies by Dire Straits and moving pictures by Rush both have seven songs that's a perfect number oh <clears throat> cool I like facts like that I love idiosyncratic facts like that uh, David says Fleetwood Mac self-title is often underrated alongside rumors but it has a great flow to it it really does 
Monday morning. Whoa! Ooh. One of our lights just Led squinted. Zeppelin physical graffiti. That light came just really down hard. That ca- Hold on, let me just... We've got so many lights here. Yeah. Those circular lights. What? It's not for you. Light? You have perfect skin. It's for the old guy over here. If we have too many more lights, I'm going to have to wear sunglasses. It's going to be too bright for me. Uh, let's see here. David says, Going for the One is one of my absolute favorites. Yes, album. Steve Howe did some of the most beautiful guitar work in rock history on that album. I had a lot of people commenting on that album when we were interviewing uh, John Anderson, um, uh, Alan, and even though Bill Bruford wasn't on that. Bill, they mentioned their favorite albums. Uh, James Taylor, the Tesla Mechanical Renaissance. James Taylor? The Tesla Mechanical. Oh, James Taylor, Tesla. Oh, oh Tesla. James. Yeah, Tesla, the band Tesla, yeah. Mechanical. I'm not fa- that familiar with that band. Uh, Brandon Steele, Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets by Metallica. Oh, I'm surprised Metallica hasn't come up before now. Not a big fan, but I certainly have a lot of respect for the band. Uh, Genesis, uh, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Yes, it's very long, but I love all of it. You know, the last interview, and Chase just re- did the last interview, uh, to commemorate, to sort of promote uh, uh, Steve Hackett's uh, seconds out reissue, like it, like regen- Genesis Revisited. We talked about The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. We talked about uh, Selling England by the Pound. Um, and a lot of stuff that, and I asked him if he'd heard the the new Peter Gabriel album because he and Peter, I, if I believe remember correctly, were both born the yeah, same month as me in February because that's the last time he talked to him. But he hasn't heard it. Peter's very private with his new music anyway. Uh, Gary Mintz, a couple more left out. King from the Village Green uh, Preservation Society and Super Tramp Breakfast in. America. Oh, of course, I think. I think the big ones from Super Tramp, the, uh, uh, Crime of the Century, Crisis What Crisis, even in the Quietest Moments, Breakfast in America, I think they're all perfect albums. Uh, do, do, do. Christopher says, The Piper at the Gates, Gates of, of Dawn. Dawn. Yeah, yeah, Pink Floyd. And uh, Zed Ebb says, Mike Oldfield, Omadon. Oh, uh, do you want me to open this because it's really hot in here? It's warm, hey? It's really, really hot in here. I it was just this is just a little, very little room, but when I'm when I'm in here recording for you know what it is? It's because we have all these lights. No, nope, actually, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. Yes, sure. They don't give up any light. Look, they don't give up just barely. Maureen says Carol King tapestry. <laughs> yes, of course. A lot of people would agree with you, but that's not about agreeing. It's about what you think is a perfect. Album. Nathan, twenty one twelve, Sticky Fingers. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't listened to Sticky Fingers. In a long time, and I should. 2112, I was just listening to it uh, a few days ago, and it, it just blows me away. And I didn't buy it back then. I only bought it a few years later. I bought it in the 80s, I think. I certainly had it recorded because we'd all, you know, back in, in the age of cassettes in the 80s, we'd lend, we'd borrow albums, but we never counted the album as I have the album unless we had the manufactured copy. <laughs> Uh, David says, for me, I rank the big four Pink Floyd concept albums. One, Animals. Two, Wish You Were Here. Three, The Wall. And four, Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, Road. yeah. And good choices. Transparent Media Truth says, Joe Walsh. But seriously, folks. Oh, <clears throat> I think it's the best one. Um, I, 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 that album just moves me. The instrumentals on it, over and over. What a great song. Um, yeah, love it. And please hit that like button. We appreciate it. Thank you. Some of mine. Mike Rutherford, Small Creeps Day. Bruce Hornsby's fourth album, Harbor Lights. Andreas Follenweider, Swiss Harpist, Down to the Moon. He's released a lot of great albums. Um, not necessarily one of mine, but I brought it up because I do own it. Pet Sounds, Beach Boys. Brent Bourgeois' debut album, remember Bourgeois Tag? I love that album. Toto, the first one. Richard Marks, his second album. Of course, Pink Floyd. Uh, Alan Parsons Project, I Robot, Boston's first and second album, Bruce Hornsby's first album, Bruce Hornsby's second album, Duke by Genesis, Selling England by the Pound as well, Billy Joel's, uh, people used to say it was his first album because they didn't realize he had a whole, well not a whole, I think he had four before this, Boston, the seventh one, total, total four. 
<clears throat> Fraser J says that I suppose a perfect album is entirely down to the listener and what genre. That's what Everyone we've been saying. Everyone has different tastes, so there can never be a perfect album. It's what makes music so great it's and universal. It's the perfect to you. We've been saying that every week when we talk about, when we have you on every week, it's never the consensus. It's always what you think. It's always what I like this or I don't like this. No one is wrong, right? And uh, um, yeah, what was the albums he'd mentioned? Did you mention any album? Uh, no. Okay. I just thought of a couple of other albums. Randy says, Cat Stevens T for the Tillerman. Tillerman, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hype with Mike. Hey, folks. Hotel California. Perfect album. Yes. That was a great one. Definitely. Movie. And that's another reason why these albums sell so well. It's not only because, oh, well, you know, there's three or four good songs on it. Most albums that sell that well, <laughs> there's a reason. Mm -hmm. the, the album cuts are as good as the singles, and they only have a chance to release a few singles. It's not because the other ones aren't good enough. It's because they got to move on to the next album or the next artist. Uh, Hayes <laughs> Anderson, Once Upon a Time by Simple Minds. I love to warm up on drums by playing along to the entire album from oh, start to finish. Cool, cool. cool. Patrick says Boston debut album. Yep. Michael says Blue by Joni Mitchell. That's, oh, a, that's a great one. And again, a cohesive, consistent sound throughout the album. Love it. And uh, BC says uh, Uriah Heap. Sal Uriah Heap. Uriah Heap Salisbury. That's because Shannon wasn't around for most of the early Uriah Heap. But there was a DJ once. Uh, his name was Mike, not Mike Shannon. Uh, I forget what his mic. Oh, God, what was his name? Anyway, he got on the radio in our small town. He was such a nice guy. Um, but he went on there and he, he announced the band Fog Hat as Fug It. Here is Fug It and Slow Ride. He used to have this really low voice. And I remember going, oh, how could he do that? Then I met the guy, and he was probably one of the nicest human beings I've ever met in my life. And he just made a mistake, you know, but he called it fuck it. Patrick says, yes, close to the edge. Yeah, of course. Uh, the Innocent Age by Dan Fogelberg. Fogelberg, you mm. love Dan Fogelberg. Yes. You were just listening to Dan Fogelberg. I was. Rick says, traffic, the low spark of high-heeled boys. Yeah. That's such a, that's such a, whacked out song that's like a trippy song too the tune itself yeah eyeball room productions tell all your friends taking back sunday i don't know how i got on this video <laughs> what <laughs> okay well you're here hi uh mark says the black crows the southern harmony and musical companion i like when the black crows you know were heavy on background vocals you know uh uh remedy is a great example of that um to me, Remedy is one of the greatest songs of that era uh, from any band. B with the, the two, three background singers, it, it's just so powerful. Dun, dun, dun. Hype with Mike, uh, Motley Crue's first album, Too Fast for Love. Mm. Mm -mm. Uh, David says, After the Gold Rush, Neil Young. Definitely. Uh, David says, Def Leppard, High and Dry is pretty darn good. I don't know why Def Leppard and me never had a relationship because all my friends love Def Leppard. I've heard all their stuff. I appreciate what they do, but I never had that kind of, you know, when you're walking up to your car and you go, yeah, that's my car. There's a love there, but I never felt that kind of love for Def Leppard. But again, I admire them. Don't hate them. Like their music. Just don't love it. Brandon says, John, did you see Genesis sold their catalog for 300 yeah, million? 300 million, yeah. I don't really usually do videos on people selling their catalogs. There's a part of me that going, I'm, I, it's almost like that's a limit for me or I don't know where to go with it. I always go like, okay, I could say that, but what do I, you know, I guess we could do a live feed and we can talk about it. But I thought of going on, but we've already put up three videos today. We put up the tragic case of drummer Jim Gordon. It's right behind me here. Uh, would he rejoin the Steely Ann or the Doobie Brothers for uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter? And the hidden treasure in the 1971 hit, Tiny Dancer. This is a very interesting video featuring Caleb Quay and them redoing Tiny Dancer under the name Hold Me Closer with, with Britney Spears. Not a big fan of the new version, but I don't hate it. Um, it's really, really interesting. I highly recommend that video, even though it's my own. <clears throat> David Robertson, World Machine by Level 42. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Great King, band. the new Red Hot Chili Peppers album is really good. No, oh, cool. But uh, Level 42, that is a perfect record to me, too. That and Mr. Mr. around that time. And the Luba album, with the Canadian singer. Those were my three go-to albums at that time. 
Uh, Buzz 420, Bob Seger, and the Silver Bullet Band, Live Bullet. Live Bullet's a great live album, yeah. Yeah, Transparent Media Truth, No Jackets Required, Phil Collins. Yeah. I was just listening to the first three Phil Collins albums, which I have on vinyl. But now, lately, I've been hooking up my 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 MacBook to my old old Sony receiver, <clears throat> not Bluetooth, but with a, a cord, Knox cord. Even though sound isn't perfect, I, I I'm listening to everything on on uh, Spotify now. I'm going through albums that I had that I didn't own. Uh, Street Talk by Steve Perry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Great album. Uh, I was Dave, just getting into radio. David says not a classic rock album, but Eric Matthews album. It's heavy in here. Is a pop masterpiece that with lots of folks um, here would probably like. I should listen to it. Mm-hmm. I, I'll I'll take yeah. I'll make a point of listening to it. Uh, Ghost King says also uh, Dookie by Green Day is great. Oh yeah, I, I I've heard it. Yeah. Uh, Jay says Bob Marley and the Whalers uh, catch a fire. I'm I'm uh, I'm not surprised this came up. Oh look, our our video came up on the list. And hike with Mike Don Henley, the end of the innocence. Mm-hmm. One of my one of my favorites it's his best. too. It clearly. It's really his best album. Uh, and and uh, um, his first one I liked, his second one I loved, his third one I loved more than anything. There you go. Uh, Patrick says, a Doobie Brothers, The Captain and Me. Captain and Me is a great album. And it has a, it's a natural thing, don't you know, which sounded, as I said in the video last couple weeks ago, natural things sounded like a single. It's it, it sounded like Long Train Running. It sounded like those kind of songs. But it was never a single, but it got a lot of airplay on, on some FM radios. <laughs> uh, Rick says, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, self-titled first album. Mm-hmm. I did a thing on the top 25 Emerson, Lake, and Palmer songs on our sister channel. If you look up Rock History Book, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, you'll find it. Um, yeah. Maureen says, I've got lots of 70s, 80s albums, BMG, Record Club, love Richard Marks. Oh, yeah. Richard Marx is such a, and he's not in the lane that much in the lane of this channel because we go into the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and he was the 80s, but I still want to interview him. He's a real funny guy, and uh, uh, um, who was it? Uh, so who gave me his number? Not his number, but his contact information. Oh, Fee Waybill, because Fee is a uh, godfather to uh, one of his kids, and they go horse riding together. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Jay says Astro Weeks by uh, Van Morrison. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like Wavelength. I've always been a big fan of that album. Oscar says Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, that's come up a few times. Scarecrow, uh, Cougar Mellencamp. Yeah, that's we've got that there. The, there's there, there's those three albums during that period that I, I just, it just changed me. I love it so much. When he had the big band. Uh, Dave Wilhauer. Hi, John and Shannon. Hey. Greetings from South Florida. For me, it's Toto 4. Uh, Actune Baby and Synchronicity. Actune Baby, yeah. Actune Baby and Synchronicity. Uh, how are you in Florida? How you been? Like, uh, Can yes. you remember the username? What was the username? Dave Wilhauer. I'll remember. Dave, how is it in Florida? We uh, Speaking of things that happen, our daughter got COVID. When, what day would you ch- test positive? Probably on Monday. And and that was her second test. That was her uh, first test. She was negative, then tested positive on the second test. Yeah. So Danica, our autistic wonder, whose immune system seems to be well, mind you, we all have the shot in the in the booster. We've been testing negative, and so has Chase. The last five days. So we're crossing our fingers. We we're are wearing ma- masks. We're masking. Beside her. I think I've gone through oh. bottles and bottles of Lysol wipes, but we're. We're, we're hoping for the best. So, um, yeah, it was a little bit of a shocker for us because we didn't expect her to be the last. For, uh, we just, she touches everything. She's very tactile. So like to, she yeah, just likes so. to touch things. <laughs> so now I'm coughing. It's psychosomatic. So I've got my work cut out for me for the next 10 to 15 days, just hoping we can keep everybody healthy. And I know sometimes the odds might be against us on that, but we Well, she are, lost her voice. Yeah, she lost it for about two days, but now she's just feeling kind of nauseated, but she's a trooper. Okay, so um, let's see here. 
Fit to be tied. The Who, Who's Next is a perfect album. Great song, perfectly sequenced. It's come up a lot. Yeah. Unforgettable Fire by U2 from Transparent. Mm-hmm. Said that. Um, Swede Savage, Hey Swede, Get okay. the Knack. Yeah, that's a good album. Uh, Johnny says, Never mind the Bullocks and Abba's Greatest Bullocks. Hits. Bullocks. And I, I've been around a lot of English and people. And Abba's Greatest Hits, and I'm not kidding. Yeah, Bullocks to that. Uh, Karen says, hi, John and Shan. Love tuning into listening to your wonderful show on Fridays. Thank Thanks, you. Karen. Nice to have you here. Uh, Murmur by R.E.M. I was just going to do a thing on R.E.M. Uh, last week, and I ran out of time, ran out of real estate in my brain. Uh, Patrick says, Derek and the Dominoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my one of my good buddies would totally agree with you. He loved, loved that album. I speak English with this guy. I love this topic. So many albums. Weezer's uh, Blue Album. Uh, GNR Appetite. Pearl Jam 10. And Live Throwing Copper. You can hear our daughter. I can. She's really grumpy since, she, of course, you can't blame her. Being autistic, she's not completely nonverbal. But... So if I might have to exit, I don't think so, but we oh, shall see. Oh, it's 9.35 here, so, so uh, far. Pulsar Lights, Who's Next? Hi, Pulsar. Who's next has come up? I, that might be the champ. That in Boston, Boston one, uh, Dark Side of the Moon has come up a lot. Uh, Pulsar Lights, Highway to Hell. Highway to Hell usually comes up on those lists because I was looking up the list of perfect albums. <coughs> and again, since we stopped talk, started talking about COVID, I'm coughing. It's psychosomatic. You want, you want some water? I'll maybe? take some water. Uh, Dave Wilhauer, John, the Def Leppard Hysteria uh, concert is the best concert I've ever seen. Cool. I've seen almost everyone in concert, been to hundreds of shows. They were the best. I think Charles, my brother, saw them. I'm not sure. Uh, Michael says Dusty in Memphis by Dusty Springfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, Transparent Media Truth says Born to Run. Oh, Speaking of a consistent album, Born to Run's a great album. Chris Booth, uh, Elton John, Madman Across the Water. Yay! There you go. Daniel Ritter, Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree, yeah. Not surprised. Uh, Patrick says, Elton John, Captain uh, Fantastic. Captain Fantastic. And, and the, the Brown, Brown Dirt Cowboy. Cowboy. Here you go. Uh, Speak English says, Dave Matthews Band, Before These Crowded Streets. You, one of your friends was the biggest Dave Matthews fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Elaine Cox, Don Henley, and the Innocents. Yes. Thank you so much, Sweet Savage, for the super chat. Appreciate that. Thank you. Very thoughtful. That's nice of you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, Soundgarden, Bad Motor Finger. Uh, Pulsar Lights, Wish You Were Here. Yeah. Victor Matthew, Pink Floyd, The Dark Side of the Moon. That's been a popular one. I think that's the champion tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bill says, Black Oak by the Scorpions. Honorable mention worldwide, live also by Scorpions. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, now I've got that Dave Matthews song in my head. Dun, 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 Greg Godovitz was on our Canadian channel. He he's uh, he's a great interview. And Karen, thank you so much for oh, thank your you. donation. Thanks, Appreciate Karen. That. Appreciate Sorry, it. I'm Thanks. I'm scrolling down here. Melody Thanks, R joined us. Hi, Melody. Hi, Melody. She says back in black ACDC. It comes up. It, I knew it would come up an awful lot because it's such a great, cohesive, very catchy. I mean, it's you can't go wrong. Uh, Karen says, I too love Street Talk by Steve Perry. I was just getting into radio. Uh, Paul Sarlite says, Late for the Sky, Jackson Brown. Oh. Uh, Greg Gorup, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Hike with Mike, John Waite, No Breaks album. John Waite is so underrated. Oh my God, his solo albums are so good. Well, I mean, solo albums. He hadn't been with the babies in so long. Uh, yeah, he's a great, great singer. I'd uh, like to talk to him. Will says Foreigner 4. I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Gilmore, self-titled. The first one, yeah. Very stripped down, the first album. Uh, I've got it on CD. I've got his last album on CD. Um, but the first one is, yeah, very, very stripped down. I like it. You know, it's not overproduced at all. <laughs> uh, Glenn Yachlin says Pink Floyd Animals. Animals has come up about well, three times tonight. Thin Lizzy, Jailbreak. Jailbreak is their best album. Patrick says Vital Signs by Survivor. Mm-hmm. Uh, King's X, 
Dogman, a Foreigner debut album. Oh, God, yeah. By the way, uh, Lou Graham was one of our most popular interviews. Lou Graham, Bernie Ledden of the Eagles, uh, Randy Meisner of the Eagles. Yeah. There you go. There's Dave. Dave Wilhauer. Oh, and Baton Rouge. Oh, oh Baco Raton. Just got wind Boca and rain. Baco Raton. Just got wind and rain. Thankfully, we avoid most of the weather. So good to hear because we were just listening um, on the news and oh, wow, the, the devastation. That is nuts. <sighs> you see the boat and it took part of the dock with the boat and the boat was in the middle of nowhere, but part of the dock was with the boat still anchored on. And they were saying they were just talking weeks and months of trying to recoup and to, and to bring things back to normal. They were talking like a long, long time. I have a few friends with mobile homes. Yeah. Uh, in the U.S. where they, they don't live there full-time, but it's their vacation home totally destroyed. Uh, Fraser J. said, Richard Marks actually sings backing vocals on Chicago 17. We can stop the hurting with Donny Osmond. I recently covered a song, Now and Forever, from my YouTube channel. Who's wow. this? Wow, Fraser J. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Sunil Ramsey, the uh, Jay Giles band, Freeze Frame. Breeze frame. Yeah. I always liked Monkey Island for Jay Giles. In high school, my friend John Scott gave me, uh, lent me Monkey Island, and I was just listening to Monkey Island the other day. Um, great album. Doo, doo, uh, Rick doo. May, uh, Chicago <sighs> Transit Authority. Yeah, considering it's a double album, it's brave to say that, but it really is an amazing project. Los yeah. Labos, Colossal Head. Los Lobos. Colossal Head. Yeah. Uh, Tom Petty, Southern Accents. Southern accents are great. Uh, yeah. And uh, Tom Tchaikovsky. Oh, Tommy Bolin? Is that one? Oh, CTA, uh, yeah, Chicago Transit Authority. Yeah. I'm terrible when people put abbreviations. You know, especially with the, now I know it, but Goodbye Old Brick Road, you know, GB, and I go, I, I don't know why my brain doesn't seem to work with that. CTA now, of course, there's a band. Uh, with those uh, uh, Danny Seraphins out there. Uh, Triumph, Allied Forces. Allied Forces, great mm -hmm. album. Tom Petty, Wildflowers. Uh, Bob Nelson said Tumbleweed Connection. Tumbleweed Elton Connection's John. great album. The Traveling Wilburys, first album. Mm -hmm. These are all great These are choices. Great. Yeah. Hayes, Hayes Henderson said, now I'm coughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Eolo, El, El Dorado is from Oscar. Yep. Uh, They've had so many great Mario, albums. the Eagles, the long run. Mm -hmm. There you go. I, I, I have, you know, I don't love the Eagles long run like I love the other ones, but it is a pretty consistent album. Uh, Pookie, Martinez, uh, Tommy Bolin, Teaser. Oh, Tom, the late great, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also chimed in with Rainbow Rising. Uh, did anyone say Hotel California? Yes, someone yes. had said that. Sorry, I'm probably reading so far about, back here. About six people for Hotel California, including me. I liked Hotel California. Uh, Blaze Eisner. Hello, Brother John and Sister Shannon. How are you? <laughs> Elton John's Tumbleweed Connection. Sorry to hear about Danica. Get better, little one. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. She's feeling it well. She can speak and we can, before it was, love you, mama. It, it is so sweet because she keeps telling me she feels sick and she feels kind of nauseated, but she's not going to get sick. So we're all about time schedules and calendars. So I'm going on a calendar saying, okay, you're going to feel better on Monday. We're guessing, of course. So we're guessing. But I'm saying you're going to feel better on Monday. So we're hoping that, we, as you know, the trajectory is she is getting better as the days go on. But I'm saying hang on till Monday, girl. Speaking of trajectory, was it Ian, the new, the new her? It's Ian, right? Uh, it's going up. Of course, it went to Florida. And cut across Florida, went into Georgia and the the the, the Carolinas, but they sowed a, a long run of it going like like a, you know sometimes it goes like a snake right it's quite quite common, and I'm going they looked at possible trajectory, and it looked like it was going to hit us again. So. Ah, Crusade Electronics, Boston, Boston. Yay, totally perfect album. Uh. Do. To not have a bad track on an album, for a band to be that in sync with the, the overall sound. Don't follow ELO, a New World Record. New World Record's a great album. Uh, Jeff, hi Jeff, Jeff from Arizona, enjoy listening to your show. Thank you. Carlos Santana, Blues from Salvador. Oh cool, thank you. Oh, Glenn Brooks, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, I love rock and roll. I love rock yeah. and roll. 
Which she did not write, but it doesn't matter because he she made it into her signature song. Uh, Clifton says, hey, Clifton, down two, then left, Boss Gakes. That is a great album. An underrated album, right, after Silk Degree. Uh, Elaine says, Jude Cole, a view from Third Street. Thank you, 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 thank you. And, I, and I'm the one who hates it when bands repeat words too often. That is one of my all-time favorite albums. Uh, and everything else Jude Cole has put out has been amazing. Look up Jude Cole on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever the heck you use. Look up Jude Cole, please. Is is you know he sings like he's the coolest dude in the universe. Paul, I have to talk to him. Paul Starlight says I'm getting the hurricane now. Lots of trees down. It's a lot weaker than it was. Really? Okay. Whew. Uh, hike with Mike. We lucked out in my area of Florida. We dodged a bullet, but the folks in Southwest Florida are hurting. It was awful. The pictures we saw were just <sighs> Shannon was on TV and. She's getting teary because that's the kind of heart she has. and <clears throat> It's it's like nothing. We had flooding when we lived in Calgary, and it was shown all over the world. The train tracks, remember, going like this by where Emma used to live. Um, Emma's a friend of ours, and her father replaced Steve Winwood in the Spencer Davis group, Eddie Harding. Long story. I'm going to interview her in the next couple of weeks again. Uh, Pookie Martinez, Alligators in the Orlando Streets. Amazing. Oh, my God. Hey, Elgin. Mark Shoesmith, Aerosmith Rocks. I'm trying to sift through here rocks. to pick out ones that we haven't heard before. Rocks here. is my favorite Aerosmith album. I love Rocks. Uh, Patrick says Alice Cooper, Billion Dollar Babies. That's a big one, yeah. Uh, Nate says The Rolling Stones, uh, Exile on Main Street. Yeah. Good uh, choices. Crusade today. Electronics, Iron Maiden Killers. I don't know a lot of Iron Maiden music, as and, and I should doing this channel, but we don't cover a lot of that 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 lane necessarily there's a lot of people who know those bands a lot better than me and thank you so much and please go ahead and whack that like button whack for it us. yeah i think people like hearing you say whack, whack the like i button. wonder why um james says journey infinity oh yeah escape was the only tour that i went of course that was the big one <laughs> uh, no one tom jankowski says sting dream of the blue turtle his first one yeah yeah scorpions in trance Blaze says, Days of Future Past. Oh, yeah. One of the greatest albums the of Moody all time. The Moody Blue Seven Sojourn. Yeah. Sojourn, one of my favorite words. <laughs> Rush Moving Pictures. Yes. Grand Funk Railroad, Closer to Home. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sunil says, Brian Adams, Reckless. That was a good one. Yeah, one of his best albums. Uh, Melody R says, Rush's first album. I like the first one. Caress of Steel got a bad rap, but I mean... And again, they were saying the sound was as, it wasn't as cohesive, but I I, I liked it. I, I didn't I didn't love it like the other ones. Fly by Night was better by by far. Dave Wilhauer says, "Give her vitamin D. It's been shown to diminish symptoms and bring faster relief. Hope Danica feels better." Oh, we do give her vitamin D, but I'm gonna up that. Thank you. Thank you for the tip. Uh, Pulsar Light, strongest tropical storm on record was uh, Typhoon Tip in 1979, ran through Japan. Oh, thank you for telling us that. We were just asking that question today, and we were about to look it up, and then we got our, our pink card for our car, for our new insurance company, because, you know, you have to change those sometimes, <laughs> um, and we went to Staples, because we don't have a we don't have a, a, a printer in the house. Uh, Dave says, Men at Work, Business as Usual, Great oh. Album, and Journey Escape. T me business as Usual, thank you. I have it up there. Uh, so what kind of boy are you, Johnny? Uh, Bayou says, Steve Wilson, the raven who refused to sing. Oh. Uh, Paul Sarlite says, number of the beast is generally considered the nest Iron Maiden album. The best, the best. Iron Maiden album. I know. See, I read word for word. Yeah, me too. Remember Anchorman, where Anchorman, where Will Ferrell's reading? Because when I read, sometimes I'll read word for word. Even though I'm lazy and I don't like reading things on print because I ad lib most of the time. Uh, but when I do read word for word, I'll do exactly that. Uh, David says Jeth <clears throat> uh, Jethro Tull, Songs from the Wood. Oh, we haven't changed that yet. Mark David Chapman is still there. I got to change that. Uh, Current says <laughs> Nitty Gritty Dirt Bands, Uncle Charlie album. Oh, cool. Sean says Deep Purple, uh, Machine Head. Machine Head is, to me, their most cohesive album. Um, I mean, Smoke on the Water, Highway Star, Space Trucking. 
Jeffrey Jackson says, Bob Dylan, uh, Time Out of Mind is awesome all the way through. It's got a lot of great albums, yeah. Uh, Billy Joel, The Stranger, Pure Genius. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What are you talking about? It's on my pile. Ooh. There isn't anything. Oh, you love Vienna. That It makes you cry, that song. Love that one. It makes her cry. Scenes from an Italian restaurant. Go on that journey. Love it. What a journey that is. <laughs> a couple's journey. Summer of 75. Dun, dun. Uh, Pookie says, Budgie, never turn your back on a friend. You know, Budgie ke uh, keeps coming up. Are you the person that keeps bringing up Budgie? <coughs> they were a little known band in North America. <clears throat> Injured table tennis player, 10 uh, Sumner's Tale. That, that's uh, one of my favorite Sting albums. Uh, Rick says, Neil Young, Mirrorball. Pearl Jam was the backup band. Oh, cool. I, I'm actually caught up here. What? I know, like, I know. Well, I've been, you're sorry, like a machine. Sorry if I've skimmed through a few people here, but I just kind of didn't want to be so far behind. You're a usually, machine. Usually we close off and we're like so far up ahead. So yeah. I wanted to make sure I'm not missing anybody here. Uh, Maureen says, Hendrix, are you experienced purple, Prince Purple Rain? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Chase knows our, uh, when Chase was like 10 years old, he knew practically every Jimi Hendrix song because he was playing with a 18 year old who was a big Hendrix fan and he started playing and now Chase is drumming like a crazy man again he never stopped drumming people think that because he stopped doing YouTube videos uh, he stopped drumming but he didn't he just uh, didn't want to be on YouTube Bayou sees Johnny Cash live at Folsom Prison yeah I've heard that one Bad yeah. Company Straight Shooter Straight Shooter is a great album Injured Table Tennis Player can you get an interview with Sting I don't think so. Well, he just came to town. Um, I don't know. Maybe because I've been I've been sharing that Sting story on our channel, where you know we were in lineup for the Zenyatta Mandata um, uh, uh, autograph session, and the three of them are there, and I met all three of them with my ex-wife girlfriend at the time. And uh, there was a 14-year-old kid in front of us, and he looked at them and said, hey, he looked at Sting, says, you guys are probably tired from doing all your things. Why don't you, you probably could use a home-cooked dinner. Why don't you come to my house? And Sting looked at him and says, well, your mother can cook, but can she? And the kid just picked up his albums and turned around and swear to God that happened. And Sting back then was a little flippy. He would never do that now. He's grown up. We've, we've all said, and he was a rock star. But... It Crazy. was one of those things, so I don't know if I... I might be on the bad list for Sting. But it's a good story. It happened. I always preface uh, it by saying, like, that's... You know, he was young, and, you know, he did things. But it's it's a story I'll never forget. Uh, David said, King Crimson, <clears throat> Starless, and Bible Black. I, God, I haven't. Long time. Uh, Dave Will Howard, John, what is your desert island band? You're stranded and can only listen to one artist. Elton? Uh, God, Bruce Hornsby. Jonathan Brooke. I love Jonathan Brooke. Ten Cent oh, Wings. We, we love We love her. Jonathan Brooke. She won't yeah. give me an interview. She reads my email. But oh. I love you, Jonathan. I still love you. <clears throat> I was out with our son Chase and he goes, here mom, I'm going to put on Jonathan Brooke, 10 Cent Wings. And he goes, you know, every time we went down to the Okanagan, we'd always be listening to this. Inner BC. Yeah. yeah. Listening to her albums. I'm Southern. Like, oh. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, Wing, uh, Jonathan Wings. Jonathan Brooke. I'm getting tired. It's been a long day. Fraser J says, John, any Simon Phillips album, right? Album what? Any any Simon Phillips albums, right? Oh, uh, the uh, Protocol series is really good. Yeah, his band. Uh, Mario says, Humble Pie, rock on. Oh, that's the first one for tonight. Thank you. How about Peter Gabriel So? That it's come up Elton. about yeah, three times, and I, I would consider that, to me, a perfect album. There's nothing bad on that album. Blaze said, Joni Mitchell's Blue, that's come up as well. It's come up about four times, yeah. Yeah. That's perfect Dave album. says, what about Joni Mitchell, Court and Spark? Court and Spark was more of a breakthrough for her, the Yellow album. Yeah. Uh, Hike with Mike says, The Cure... Uh, disintegration album wow an emotional roller coaster album thank you so much uh richie oh well, thank you uh weezer the blue album not a bad song thank you for your donation thank you appreciate that uh darren says jagged little pill lance morissette oh yeah, yeah. that's right up yeah. there for me too yeah 
it took a while for me to get into you ought to know that was the one I had a, a problem with the way that she's kind of talking to you in the beginning kind of doing this and I remember going I hate that and now I love it I love everything about it I think she's the coolest gal woman she's just I think she's brilliant and the stuff she's released after that is, is, is amazing uh, Jean Phillips hey John love your interviews Nazareth you. Hale of the Dog Hair, Hair of the, the dog. dog, not their best, but a perfect album. It's a great album, and I like um, I like uh, uh, Too Close for Rock and Roll. Is that the, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, Close Enough for Rock. What was the name of that album? Uh, the 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 black and white album. Uh, Billy Joel, Rebel Yell. Oh, Billy uh, Billy Idol. Oh, sorry, Billy Idol, Rebel Yell. Yeah. Uh, Fraser J. Kenny Loggins very underrated, especially the leap of faith that he mentioned in your interview. It's incredible. I, I there's my word, there's my phrase. I've got to circle back. They, uh, the 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 label that I work with, the promotions company that I work for, ha haven't approached me with a lot of new stuff lately. So <clears throat> we'll have to get get it get on that. Uh, David Rice <clears throat> says the five police albums are pretty much all perfect in the sense we're using here. I really, I rarely get the urge to skip a track. Ghost in the Machine was the only one that I bought that I didn't like. I don't know why. There was just something too somber about it. That's the only one, only police album I don't like. Uh, Maureen says, my mom heard my sister play Walk on the Wild Side, broke the 45 and half. She was in fourth grade. Yeah, well, it's a little racy, right? <laughs> it's the only artist that that musicians, a few musicians, I've called him a mercurial uh, character. Uh, when he was good, he was good. When he was not good, he was, he could be nasty. Uh, do, do, do. Ellen Parsons, Turn of a Friendly Card. Oh, I love that album. Pink Floyd, Obscured by Clouds. Did Mario say, did someone mention Free Fire and Water? Mm. Pulsar Lights, Rainbow, uh, Long Live Rock and Roll. And uh, Surgeon 72, Metallica, Master of Puppets. That Master of Puppets, yeah. That's come up come a few up. times, and I knew it would. So we're going to wind things down pretty soon. Uh, Scorpions, Love Drive, Leonard Cohen, Various Positions. And Jackson Brown, The Pretender. Yeah, I Isn't like Running on Empty. Was, yeah. To me, the, uh, Running on Empty just... <sighs> running on Empty was like a... Well, it literally is a road trip. It's a live album, and there's a whole story behind it. But Russ Kunkel on drums on that album, I just love. The Birds, Sweetheart of the Rodeo, the band music from Big Pink. Maureen said, loved when you interviewed the Liverpool Band members on several shows over a year ago. It's coming up again because they have a few reissues coming up. So Graham, uh, Graham Goble got a hold of me. Uh, three weeks ago, he just emailed me out of the blue and said, John, we've got this coming up. And hi, there's our dog. Every now and there's then. There's our he dog. Comes he comes to see to us. Say hi. So um, I think Glenn Shorick will be available and Beat Bertles as well. So we're going to start that all over again. It's weird when you interview someone after you've interviewed them for uh, a, like a long time. In all, I think I've interviewed Graham Goble for a six hours. <clears throat> So you go into it saying, wow, we just talked about that. Let's talk about human stuff. Let's talk about different things. And it ends up being two guys talking. And I, I always hope my interviews are just two guys talking. At the end, it, most of them end up just two guys talking about stuff. Jeffrey Jackson, appreciate you guys. The recent Foreigner and Grand Funk interviews have been great. And love, Thank you. John Anderson. Thank you, yeah. Lever boy, get lucky, keep it up, love, and every man and of it. Get lucky. I mean, <laughs> oh, be careful of that chord. That's right. Uh, let me hold them. No, that's fine. Uh, Neil Young, what a good American boy. star in bar. <laughs> he, he loves Shannon. He loves Shannon. What a good boy. Uh, Patrick says Jackson Brown's he game just was his recorded butt. live right near my home at uh, Merriweather Pavilion in Columbia. Wow. Hi, what a good boy. You should bring your doggies in the video more often. Thanks. We had to, but we had to rehome the last guy because he just barked and he, constantly, and, he, and, and we loved him. It was so hard for Danica. Shannon cried a lot, but it was hard. But he is in a you can't wonderful that home, so it's going to unhook the microphone. Right. Turned out to be very good. Oh, uh, David says, "What a cutie!" 
So jealous of your doggy, David Searle. Rick May, Led Zeppelin 4. Oh my God, it's Def come up. What? Led Zeppelin 4 has not come up tonight. How could it not come up? I, oh, well, maybe I passed it. I don't think so. All from Canada. Yes, uh, Mario. Uh, FM Black Noise is a beautiful album. Anyone who doesn't know FM... Uh, <clears throat> uh, hold on. Blaze. Brother John, I enjoy 60s, 70s music. Today's vinyl was uh, Rita Coolidge. Oh, Anytime, Anywhere. I had that album. God from the Columbia Record Club. Excellent album. Have a great weekend. God bless. God bless you. Pookie Martinez, Love Forever Changes. Oh, wow. Pulsar Lights. What kind of dog is that, Shannon? It is a cockapoo poo. So you're looking at a quarter cock, uh, I should say, three quarter <laughs> poodle and a quarter cocker spaniel. And you get this little guy that kind of. He's very lanky. Yes, and many say he looks like, they go, oh, he's so, she's so cute. Yeah, everyone thinks it's a, it's a, and, and he's, he's, he, there's a lot to him. He's just got a little head. A little girl came up to us once and says, oh, I love your, both dogs were there at the time. I love your dog with the little head. I'm going, okay. Uh-oh. Yes, we, we've got a clock out here. Danica has got her scrabble time. I'll stay on for another five minutes. Shen, you can bring the dog yeah. with you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed being a part of it as always on Friday. I'm just gonna... <laughs> you bring it. Look at this. I'm gonna mask up because if our daughter has uh, has uh, COVID nineteen, she's uh, is she twenty four or twenty five? A loose track. She's twenty four. Twenty four. So we're all just autistic. We're all just trying to stay safe. Touches everything. Runs around the house touching everything. And so. she runs. I mean, anyone who has an autistic child, they're like, woo. And I'm following her with Lysol wipes and sp yeah. Lysol spray three in one. Yeah, everything. That's yours. But thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy your night. For those in Florida. Please stay safe. Oh, my safe God. And for those the Carolinas and, and Georgia. And uh, let him down. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thanks. Shannon's going to get up. I'm going to stay here for a little bit because I have some time to kill before I record my show. Come on. Before I record my radio show. Just Did you take the iPad with you? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got it. <coughs> it's psychosomatic because she has COVID. Uh, Pookie, the car is candy. Oh, I love candy. Oh, I love that. Uh, oh, see, is, Pookie says, see ya, Shannon. Maureen says, Houses of the Holy. It, you know what? Being the more acoustic one on some levels, I've never, it's never been on my A-list, but if you love it, you love it. Uh, Barrett, thanks for the show. Patrick, bye guys. Uh, David Hubbard, Bob Dylan, Highway 60, for, uh, 61, revisit it. We knew that one would come up an awful lot. <laughs> anyway, I'm starting to lose my voice. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, I got to keep my voice for... See, I start talking about COVID. And all of a sudden, we tested negative today. Our daughter brought it into the house from her... I think we, we think from her day program, but it's an honest thing. It can happen. Um, we thought Chase, our 18-year-old son, would bring it in via uh, Costco because he works at Costco. But that didn't happen. It ended up being uh, Danica. So Chase test, test, tested, ah, I'm getting tired, negative. We tested negative, both of our third tests, I think. So has anyone had, had someone in their house with COVID and not gotten it themselves? I mean, I'm sure that happens an awful lot. Who's next is the champion tonight, I think. That's come up the most. Jack, what? Sorry, I didn't mean to shout. I think she's, thanks, John and Shannon. Cheap, oh, cheap trick, live at Budokan. I've never known how to say that. Is it Budokan, Budokan? Steve Winwood, back in the high life. Oh, I like talking back to the night. Uh, and and I, for whatever reason, that wasn't available digitally for a while. You couldn't get it. Oh, I've got to go anyway. I've got low power. My computer. Oh, Stars Violation. Groucho Marx recorded a music album. Have an adult 48-year-old autism can relate. Oh, Maureen, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Pookie. Okay, guys, got to go because I'm on low power. Appreciate everyone coming on here. If you ever want to support the channel, there are links at the very top of the description of the video. So like our video, please, and uh, appreciate all of you being out there. Shannon's been here if you're just coming on, but she's just got to look after Danica, who right now has uh, uh, COVID-19. So 
It's been an interesting household the last few, the last week. Take care of yourself. Love you guys.